Let's go ahead and set an hour for you to wake up consistently every day of this week, say 7 a.m. There are a couple rules to start off. You can't hit the snooze button for one, and you have to get out of bed as soon as the alarm goes off. Really? Now pull up your phone and set your alarm. Next on the list, sleeping hours. This will differ a bit depending on how old you are. Here's a chart that might help. People aged 13 to 18 will need around 8 to 10 hours of sleep. Older than that, 7 to 9 hours a day is good enough. Upwards of 65, it's 7 to 8 hours. Say you need 7.5 hours of sleep. For this, you'll need to go to bed at 11.15 p.m., which leaves 15 minutes for you to actually fall asleep. This means no electronic devices when you're in bed. None! Otherwise, you might just end up watching videos all night long and there goes your sleep. When you're sleeping, you go through different stages. Stage 1 is when you're between being awake and falling asleep. Stage 2, you'll be settled in your bed and your body temperature will get a bit lower. This is when you might want to snuggle in your sheets. Stages 3 and 4, your body starts recovering from the hard day you've had. Think of it as you getting energized by the minute. During stage 5, you finally start dreaming. It's called the REM cycle. The ones before were the NREM. They stand for rapid eye movement and non-rapid eye movement. When you're flying over the Statue of Liberty in your dreams, your eyes are probably trying to keep up with you even with eyelids closed. This last one, REM, is also the one that's boosting your mental and physical performance. So when you wake up, you're ready to tackle your day with all of your brain power. If you've got a tough day ahead tomorrow, REM is what's going to get you prepared for it. If you have adequate hours of sleep and are consistent with your schedule, it might even eliminate the need for afternoon naps or the drowsiness we feel throughout the day sometimes. If you can't sleep and you're just turning the TV on and off, here's what you can do. First of all, turn the TV off for good. Second, you can try and set a nice and quiet environment for yourself. Quiet doesn't always mean silent. It might help to have an ambient sound going on in the background, like waves crashing down on the sand or rain falling in a forest. If you're busy thinking about your next meeting or stressed about work, think about a word or phrase to get your mind off that. You can even count sheep. (laughs) Third, embrace it. It's okay to be thinking about stuff. We usually think about life in quiet spaces, and our bedroom is probably the quietest space of all. It's just like when you're taking a shower deep in your thoughts, and just like that, 15 minutes go by. Fourth, find a comfortable position to fall asleep. You'll want this to be your bed, because otherwise, you'd have to move and that might ruin your sleeping plans. You could fall asleep on the couch, but that sounds counterproductive because you'll end up moving to your bed anyway. If none of these work for you, try controlled breathing relaxation techniques instead. Much like counting sheep, here you'll be counting your breaths at the same time that you control them. Do it with me. Inhale, now exhale. Inhale again, now exhale. Like this, you're reducing your stress levels and preparing your brain for sleep. It's best done at night and not while you're watching a YouTube video. But if you happen to be watching this in bed, great! You're already halfway there. Here's another one, the 478 method. What you do is place the tip of your tongue near the ridge behind your two front teeth and you hold it there throughout your breathing exercise. Now, with your mouth closed, you want to slowly inhale through your nose. Count to four while you're doing this. Next, you'll hold your breath and count to seven. The last step of this breathing exercise is to exhale with your mouth open and count to eight. Repeat it three more times and you'll find yourself in dreamland in less time than you can blink, literally. These exercises are especially great for those who can't visualize stuff very well. Or you might not even want to go through the trouble of counting sheep. You might just want to empty your mind instead. During the day, one thing you can do is get loads of sunlight. It helps to regulate your internal body clock. If you can't get out of the house, bright artificial light will do just fine. And at night, it's the other way around. You need to be in a dark place. It'll make you sleepier and even boost the production of melatonin. Simply put, it's a sleep hormone. Think of it as a secret ingredient. If during the night you suddenly wake up, be mindful of not looking at your clock. It'll stress you out and your mind will spiral until you're fully awake. And then all you can think of is, I can't fall back asleep, with your eyes wide open looking at the ceiling. 
tiring yourself during the day helps. For example, running or swimming. Any exercise, really. It'll make you feel better and you'll have a healthier sleep. Just make sure what you're doing is not too strenuous, because it might have the opposite effect. Here's a tip. Early morning workout means a good night's sleep. Go out for a hike or take your bike out and go for a ride. In bed, suddenly waking up from a dream, it feels like you're falling. You've probably experienced this. It has a name, hypnic jerks. And don't worry, it happens to everyone. Regarding our fellow mammals, sea otters sleep on the water, floating with their backs on the surface literally a waterbed. One trick they use is sleeping in strands of kelp. But here's something cute. They hold hands to prevent them from drifting away from each other. Aww. A lot of our lifetime is spent sleeping, and more precisely, a third of it. However, cats have us beat. They spend two-thirds of their lives sleeping. But that's not all. Bats beat even them. They sleep for 82% of the day. That's 19 hours spent with their eyes closed. They win the crown. Now get this, a giraffe only needs around 2 hours of sleep per day. You might think that some humans can do with just 5, but that's not true. If we were to have 5 or fewer hours of sleep every day, we'd be so sleep-deprived we'd go around hugging corners looking for a nap. You might eventually get used to being without the hours of sleep you need, but the downside here is you won't be at your peak performance, nor will you be as creative or focused. It'll affect your day-to-day activities and cause memory issues. Chances are, you won't even remember what you had for dinner last night. And if you need to make a choice on, say, what birthday cake to get for your coworker Karen, whose birthday is tomorrow, you might have a hard time with that, too. If you're sleep-deprived and you hit your knee on a table or step on a Lego, it'll hurt more. I, for one, like black-and-white movies. I think they add a nostalgic vibe to cinema. But as it turns out, 12% of people dream entirely in black and white. Their dreams are like cowboy movies. I can just picture someone riding a horse in the Old West already. Now, picture sleeping for the entirety of winter, hibernating. Well, humans can't do it, mostly because our ancestors were tropical animals, which means there was no need for them to hibernate. And when we eventually started migrating to really cold places, it was already too late for us to evolve in a way that would allow hibernation. But a dream that would last six months? (laughs) Count me in! It'd always be warm, and I'd be the fastest runner around. Still, we had shelter and warm clothes. Fire helped a lot with our survival, too. Unlike our bear friends, we sat in our caves with our bodies warm next to the fire. (sighs) Okay, that does it for me. A whopping one-third of healthy teens and adults say they often feel super sleepy and like they have no energy. Let's get to the root of why we're all so tired. (sighs) Pardon me. First off, you need to avoid eating too many refined carbs like sugar. It gives you a rapid energy fix and your blood sugar levels shoot up. But this is temporary, and it quickly comes back down. This is what we call a sugar crash. Craving quick energy leads us into a bad cycle of being energized and then quickly crashing. That's why eating too many sugary foods can actually make you super tired throughout the day. Think of it as plugging your phone in to charge when the battery is low. It works fine when it's plugged in, but take it off charge and the battery level quickly drops. Reducing the amount of sugar and processed carbs you have in your meals and snacks will give you way more energy throughout the day. Replacing those chocolate snacks with vegetables is going to make you feel way more alert during the day. Food has a huge impact on your energy levels. You get a lot of your energy from calories. If you don't eat enough of these calories, your metabolism slows down so that you can save the little energy that you have. This can make you feel and even look like a zombie. Teenage boys need around 2,800 calories each day, while girls need 2,200. When you're done doing all that growing and turn into an adult, that number drops down to 2,500 calories for men and just 2,000 for women. Protein is also really important for boosting your energy levels. It's found in meats, including beef, lamb, and chicken. Dairy products, eggs, and fish are also really great sources of protein. If you're tired, you should also be watching your caffeine intake. 
When you think an afternoon coffee or energy drink is the perfect thing to wake you up throughout the day, it can really mess with your sleep. Most people think caffeine stays in our system for around 5-7 to seven hours. That's why everyone says don't drink coffee before bed. But in reality, caffeine stays in our bodies for double that amount of time. That's between 10 and 14 hours. Let's say you drink a caffeinated drink by 3 p.m. By 10 p.m., when you're winding down for bed, half of that caffeine is still in your system, giving you an energy boost when you really don't need it. That means by 4 a.m., a whopping quarter of the caffeine from your drink is still in your system. This is sure to make you toss and turn throughout the night. There is a simple fix for this one. Just avoid any energy drinks or coffee after lunchtime. They say you need around 8 hours of sleep to feel refreshed the next day. Younger people need even more than that. Here's where a lot of us are going wrong. If you need to wake up at 7 a.m. for school, you go to bed at 11 p.m. to get that 8 hours of sleep. But that's not taking into account you could spend over a half an hour falling asleep. Work out on average how long it takes you to doze off and add this on to your 8-hour sleep time. After a couple of weeks of doing this, you'll feel much more refreshed. It's also a bad idea to climb into bed and open up Netflix before you hit the hay. Your bed is solely a place to sleep. Your bright laptop screen won't help you drift off either. You should ideally avoid using any screens that give off blue or white lights at least an hour before bed, ideally more. This includes your phone, laptop, and TV, too. Screens prevent your brain from releasing the sleep hormone, which is called melatonin, making it difficult for your body to know when it's time to doze off. Your body gets confused and thinks that your screen light is sunlight, assuming it's daytime. This is why it keeps you awake and supplies your brain with energy. Try taking it one step further and making your bedroom an electronic-free zone. You can swap that phone screen for a good book, and it should help you drift off to slumberland a lot quicker. Audiobooks can also work really well to help you doze off. Another tip you can try to ensure you're getting as much sleep as possible is to get a blackout blind. If you don't want to spend any money, you can also just take a dark sheet or towel to cover your window. This way, when the light starts to come into your room in the earlier hours of the morning, it doesn't wake you, and you can carry on dreaming about puppies and kittens, or whatever. Exercise is another super important thing to keep us energized throughout the day. It also helps us sleep. You might think that if you get home tired after school or work, that lying on the couch could help you recharge your batteries. But although it's the last thing you want to do, try a little exercise instead. Even just 15 minutes will do. This doesn't mean you have to start going to the gym every day. Try incorporating a daily walk into your schedule. It doesn't need to be long. A half an hour round trip is all it takes. There are three really easy ways to get a bit more active during the day. Walk instead of jumping in the car for short journeys. Switch the elevator for the stairs. Stand rather than sit down whenever possible. If you work in an office or at home, try a standing desk. Jumping jacks are an easy exercise you can add to your daily routine. They work the whole body and get your blood pumping. You don't need any equipment either, so they're great for when that midday slump hits you in the office. A solid sleeping pattern is also super important for being more alert every day. Try going to bed at the same time every night, then waking up at a set time each morning too. Adults who go to bed at the same time on weekdays and weekends are generally less tired throughout the day and have less difficulty falling asleep at night. Just like plants wilting when they don't get enough water, our bodies can't function properly when we need some H2O. Drinking lots of water throughout the day will help you keep those energy levels up high, whether you're about to climb Mount Everest or just shopping at the local store. Stress uses up a lot of that energy you've worked to build up. If you've got an assignment due or a big exam coming up, try these tips to de-stress. Listen to your favorite tunes. Read a great book. Hang out with your best friends. Try out yoga or meditation. 
there's a bunch of free at-home yoga tutorials online. Meditation is super simple, too. Just find a calm place to sit and get comfortable. Focus on your breath, slowly breathing in and out. You're going to want to set a time limit as well. If you're new to meditation, start with a small amount, like 5 or 10 minutes. There's a whole bunch of meditation sounds on the internet to help keep you calm and focused, too. Whatever relaxes you is a surefire way to feel refreshed and boost those energy levels. Now, if you've tried all of this and you're still feeling tired, there may be another hidden reason. Food intolerances can make you feel super sluggish and affect your energy and sleep. Gluten, dairy, or egg intolerance is really common. You also get loads of your energy from vitamins. You can get iron from spinach, broccoli, red meat, and turkey. Vitamin D comes mostly from mushrooms, fatty fish, seafood, and most importantly, sunshine. Milk, eggs, and beef are great sources of B12. If changing your diet is too much to ask, though, you can always pick up vitamin supplements from your local health store. This will do the trick, too. You're just about to fluff up your pillows and get dressed in your favorite pajamas. You then set your alarm for the next day. It's going to ring in 8 hours. Yeah, that should do the trick. Isn't that what your doctor suggested? But as the alarm starts ringing the next morning, you wake up feeling more tired than you were when you got into bed. Are those 8 hours of recommended sleep just a myth? Sorry to break it to you, but as natural as sleep is for human beings, some of us can indeed be bad at snoozing. And it might have something to do with your circadian rhythm. Let me explain. The circadian rhythm is a natural internal process a lot of living organisms have. Think of it as the project manager of our bodies that's in charge of our schedules for falling asleep and waking up in the morning. It also helps to synchronize our bodies with the environment and the amount of light we're exposed to during the day. We're not the only creatures with a circadian rhythm. It's actually found in most living beings, including animals, plants, and even some bacteria. It plays a crucial role in regulating sleep, feeding needs, and even hormone production. During the day, the body produces hormones such as cortisol, which helps us stay alert and awake. At night, the body begins to produce melatonin, which makes us feel tired and promotes sleep. The circadian rhythm helps to let your body know when it's appropriate to generate these hormones, so it can function properly. When our circadian rhythm is messed up, like when we have jet lag or work irregular shifts at our jobs, our sleep patterns may become disrupted as well. What happens next? We can find it difficult to fall asleep, or we end up waking up frequently throughout the night. Or, as you might have experienced already, we end up feeling tired and groggy during the day, even if we've slept a reasonable number of hours during the night. To make sure our sleep pattern remains healthy, we need to have a consistent sleep schedule. It may also help if we expose ourselves to natural light during the day and avoid looking at screens, like our phone or tablet, before bedtime. By following these rules and ensuring that our body's internal clock is functioning okay, we can improve the quality of our sleep and overall well-being. We now know how important sleep is, but how much sleep do we actually need? The explanation is kind of complex. For starters, it has a lot to do with our age. When we're born, we need the most amount of sleep, somewhere around 14 to 17 hours of snooze time. As we grow older, by the time we're toddlers, we need 11 to 14 hours each day. Most teenagers need 8 to 10 hours of sleep, and by the time we're adults, we should be just fine with as little as seven hours. Apart from age, genetics also has a lot to do with our sleep needs. Some people are naturally more prone to needing more or less sleep. Also, people who lead more active lifestyles may need more sleep to recover and regenerate their bodies. High levels of stress can affect our sleep and cause people to need more sleep to feel rested. You might have also noticed that you need more sleep when you've caught a cold or when you've eaten too much. Do all of us need to fall asleep at the same hour to feel rested? You've surely heard of some people being night owls. 
while others are considered larks. Night owls tend to be more energetic and productive at night, while larks are more productive in the morning. Both types of people have their own unique habits and preferences, and there's no right or wrong way to be a night owl or a lark. There are lots of questionnaires you can do online to see which category you fit in best, or you can test it for yourself at home. Try going to bed at different hours for a specific period of time and see which option fits best for your energy levels throughout the day. How about our sleeping position? Can that also influence how well rested we feel when waking up? Absolutely! And the most effective way to figure out what works best for you is to note everything down in a sleep diary. You'll need to record your sleep habits for at least a week or two to have the best results. Just make sure to switch between falling asleep on your back, your side, or your stomach each night. You don't have to change your favorite sleeping position if you're not having any issues, as long as you wake up feeling well rested. If you do experience problems, here are a couple of things you can try. For example, if you have neck pain, you'll have better rest while sleeping on your back or your side. You can also try using a thicker pillow when sleeping on your side and a thinner one when resting on your back. If your sinuses are the ones keeping you up at night, you can try sleeping on your back with your head a bit more elevated. A thicker pillow should do the trick too. If you have hip or back pain, try sleeping on your back, but place a pillow or a rolled up towel underneath your knees. It should reduce the pressure on your spine and help relieve the pain. We can't finish our list of facts about sleep without talking about the greatest love story of all. The one we all have with the snooze button, am I right? Does hitting the snooze button really give us some extra time to rest? This might also be the biggest myth of all. Not only is this information untrue, but hitting the snooze button can make us feel groggier in the long run, even though technically we're sleeping more. Those 10 minute intervals of sleep we indulge in over and over again are not a good type of sleep. There simply isn't enough time for us to properly fall back into a deep sleep. Also, there is such a thing as actually sleeping too much, and oversleeping makes you even sleepier during the daytime and can affect your metabolism and your energy levels too. Not to mention, it can be a real nuisance for people sharing the same bed or room with you. Breaking up with the snooze button can be overwhelming, I know, but there are things you can do to soften the blow. For starters, set a realistic alarm. If you're more of a night owl, don't force yourself to wake up really early in the morning if you don't have to. Find a sleeping schedule that works for you and, most importantly, stick to it. Follow up with getting out of bed as soon as you wake up. The change in posture will trigger the right chemicals in your body that remove your need to go back to sleep. If nothing seems to work, you can even move your alarm clock across the room. If you need to get out of bed to hit the snooze button, you'll be less likely to go back. Just because you don't have any of these problems doesn't mean your sleep patterns are doing great. Some people seem to think that just because they can fall asleep anywhere, they're good sleepers. But that can't be further away from the truth. On average, it should take us 5 to 15 minutes to fall asleep after we go to bed. If it takes longer for an extended amount of time, it may be a sign of insomnia. On the other hand, if falling asleep takes less than 5 minutes, you may be sleep deprived. And it can happen for a lot of different reasons, like stress or even diet changes. It can also mean the sleep you're getting, even if it's the recommended 7 to 9 hours a night, is fragmented or disturbed.